Uh, welcome all. Uh, welcome to Sinajita Talent Cast. Uh, today we have uh, JD uh, Norton. Um, he has a 20 year career in uh, employee experience with uh, a strong experience in eBay for 14 years. He's been the head of internal communications at uh, Norton Security and also was the first director of internal communications at Fitbit. Uh, so a lot of experience there and it's an amazing time to be in the HR space. Welcome, Dedi. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, with this pandemic, what's happening right now, I know it, we are in an amazing space in terms of how the HR space is kind of getting transformed. So let me go with the first question here. In your past experiences, uh, you've led internal communications, employee experience for Symantec, how did you create a strategy that aligned with the company goals and values and execute the same to engage employees in the business and mission of the company? would love to hear from you. Yeah, totally. Um, and so it's interesting because, you know, I supported the Norton business unit at Symantec as well as the website security business unit. Um, so Symantec was split into three business units. There was the main one and then the two that I supported. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting because you want to have a cohesive you know, engagement strategy that aligns with the global company strategy. Right. Um, but at the same time, sort of keeping the uniqueness of each of those business units. And so it's almost like creating two strategies in a right. way, um, because you want to, you know, each one has different offices, office locations, different set of employees. Um, and you really want to create something that is really targeted to those specific people. Um, you know, in very large organizations, you know, you, you have sort of that global overarching umbrella strategy and you have your vision, your mission. And then it's kind of up to those business units to sort of determine how they align with those, but keeping all of those in mind. And so I think that was, you know, specific to Symantec was, was how we did that. You know, the okay. Norton security unit was very, it was very, it was a lot younger it was a little more hip, you know, it was kind of the cool business <laughs> unit as part of Symantec. And so we could do a lot of, you know, a lot of different things, you know, a, a lot of the leadership was more apt to, um, you know, be casual and have conversations and have some fun with it and get into video. Okay, awesome. I think uh, uh, employee engagement, I think is now gotten to a lot of, you can say a heavy focus now, right? So, oh, I mean, yeah. we all believe that uh, being employee, uh, like employee engagement benefits uh, both employees and organizations. But um, how have we built a culture of listening, learning, and doing in kind of in remote teams, helping employees to take ownership of their own engagement? I think that's a pretty uh, challenging thing to do. What's your, been, what's your experience been? Yeah, uh, it really is. And I think you know, I think the listening and learning part is something that does get sort of overlooked a lot of times. I tell a lot of people that as an internal communicator, um, my job is 70% just listening what is happening <laughs> within an organization. Okay. You know, it's, it's like people, leadership looks to me to know what is happening within the organization, right. to, to have all of those voices. I always say that internal co communications is sort of like the conduit between leadership and the employees. And I'm that filter. I, I filter information going both directions. Um, and it's, so listening is huge because if you don't have a pulse on what is happening with all the right. employees throughout the company, then you can't adequately give that information to leadership to make decisions. And also you can't, like if you can't sort of disseminate information from leadership in a way that engages the employees, knowing what they kind of want to hear and what they need to hear, then, you know, everything is kind of at a loss. And that's where, you know, engagement and communication break down. And so listening and learning, I think, is one of the most important things that a communicator can do. In the post-COVID world, how, how, what's your uh, uh, kind of take on how the employee engagement or employee experience is going to change and how companies and managers have to adapt to this? I think right now, you know, you, We hope COVID, there's a post-COVID, right? <laughs> we really hope there's a post-COVID. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it has to come someday, right? <laughs> Unless this thing just keeps like mutating. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think post COVID, COVID itself, like made, I think all companies take a step back and it forced them to get creative. 
right. it forced them to sort of, if anybody was ever lazy about employee engagement or communications, you couldn't be anymore. Because, you know, I think a lot of places maybe relied on sort of that word of mouth and the water cooler talk that happened in the office, you know, um, and that is non-existent now. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's been interesting to see all of the creative ways people have been communicating and engaging their employees during COVID. And I think what needs to happen is post COVID, we need to take a lot of the learnings that we have and institute those into what we were doing before, because okay. I think there's been a lot of really cool things that have come up um, because we sort of, it's COVID sort of forced our hands. In a post-COVID world, when you're looking at uh, companies investing on employees and how they can retain. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking, do you think uh, this will be, how much of effort should they put in terms of uh, employee engagement? For example, now, uh, I think companies have realized that they can hire from anywhere in the U.S., for example. They can work from anywhere. Yeah. Because they have, there's an acceptance, a comfort factor that's come in. And, uh, and again, with that comes in, what kind of innovative or creative ways you think you have seen or you think companies can do to keep the employee engagement? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that's, that's first is you need to get in front of employees more often, especially the leadership right. team. Um, you know, you can't, you can't just rely on a, a once a month, all hands, you know, to, to let employees see leadership. Um, because they don't see them in the halls anymore. They don't see them in the lunchroom. Right. You know, they have no visibility. Like if they're not in a meeting with leadership, they don't see them now. And so it's important to make sure that the leadership within your company has a voice that the employees are constantly hearing, you know, not overbearing such, but like, you know, weekly meetings or biweekly meetings and change those up. You know, do you, are your leadership team maybe starting like a weekly end of week, um, you know, check-in of, hey, this is what was on my mind this week. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm looking forward to and doing shout outs and, you know, celebrating people. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, I think there's a lot that is going to need to be maintained, you know, post COVID as well. Um, because I think that's been one of those best practices that a lot of people have instituted um, that have been great. You know, I, I think leadership is, is being more visible now than they have been. And I think employees are really appreciating it, especially now that a lot of companies are, are going to be hiring remotely, right. moving to like a hybrid in-office remote strategy for, you know, um, when they return to work. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. And I think that huh. oh, yeah. know, leadership always needs to be transparent, but, you know, especially now you, you, you need to, to be there. You need to be seen and be heard by all of your employees. And, one is the intent of saying that, hey, I, I need to have employee engagement strategies, uh, do this, put more focus. But the second thing is how can you equip managers, right? Ultimately, they are the ones below you. The leadership will have that initiative. The, it has to come from the top, but somehow it has to drain, go down the organization, make sure the managers are trained. What kind of things do you think companies can do to make sure the manager, managers are better prepared to handle the post-COVID world? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think it's a matter of actually having like a cascading strategy within your, within your business. Um, you know, everybody, you always hear about cascading communication, right. you know, <laughs> I know, it comes down, but I, you know, I think a lot of people rely too much on, on thinking that, you know, all managers know how to do this well okay. uh, and when you're cascading information that's where it always starts to sort of fall apart is you know you're coming down you've got you you know you have your leader your c-suite level and then you've got your seniors and your vps and your senior directors and your right. directors and your managers and, and by the time it gets down to the managers it's like that game of phone you know where <laughs> it's, the message has been lost right. you know right. and so i think one thing that you know people really need to do especially now because you can't always have these meetings with people and you can't have these conversations is making sure that you're equipping your managers with the tools that they need. How do you hold a meeting that is successful? You know, what types of meetings are most successful for what types of messaging, giving them key messages. 
I think the key messaging thing, and that's something that kind of just carries across internal comms as a whole is so important because um, you want everybody saying the same thing. If one manager goes out and gives a different message than right, you know, eight right. other managers, it's lost. Like credibility is lost. And exactly. so giving them all of those tools, and, you know, and it can be as simple as a doc. Every time we have a big project or a big product or program that's launching, we have a, a doc that we send to our extended leadership team that says, here is how to communicate this. I think with the employee engagement, I think that's, you're going to have probably better employee retention too, right? So uh, that's oh, going to for be sure. Because with I think that's working remote. Yeah. I mean, employee engagement is, it's so important. You know, if you don't have an engaged employee base, they leave, yep. you know, I mean, they could be completely bought into your mission, but if you're not engaging them in ways that are making them feel like they're developing and that they're, they're part of the journey, then you're not going to have them for very long because the competition right now, especially oh, yeah. you know, in places like Silicon Valley is insane, especially for engineers. <laughs> I, mean. oh, yeah. I wish I was an engineer in Silicon Valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, awesome. I think, thanks, JD. I think that's amazing insights. Um, I'm uh, kind of excited in how the HR space is actually going to develop themselves in this uh, and use uh, with the business environment. So I think I'm pretty sure a lot of innovation is going to come and you're going to play a big part of it. Uh, thanks for coming in. It's been amazing. Uh, this is another episode of Synergita uh, Talent Cast coming to end. Hope to join you soon again. Thank you.